Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Bill Jordan here with Candid Art Interviews. I'm your host, Bill Jordan. We have Candid Interviews because we want you to be known throughout the world, whether you're a sculptor, painter, or candlestick maker. People buy from people they know. And what better way for people to know you by your Candid video interview. Today we have with us all the way from Michigan, David Annas. Hey, David, how you doing today? Great, how are you? Very good, very good. I understand you had some difficulty getting back to Michigan from the sunny state of, uh, of Arizona. Is that correct? Well, so we went through Arizona from Florida. I mean, sorry, from California. Okay, and what were you doing in California? Uh, I was out in California for a few days um, being a tourist and shooting models. Oh, shooting models. Okay. Now, yeah, you were there with your wife, of course, right? Of course. <laughs> and what did she say about you shooting the models? My wife has always been very supportive of me shooting models. Uh, we've, you know, I, I probably shoot 40 to 50 models a year. And um, we've had models house sit for us. We've had models uh, uh, befriend our children. We've had, we've had models who've come for dinner. Um, and uh, they're part of our life. Wow, that's, that's, that's another side I never thought of. I didn't think of models as being part of your life. I thought models were just eye candy. Some models don't become, you know, part of our lives. They, they strictly are there to shoot. They shoot and leave. But, you know, some models uh, uh, have, you know, at times uh, house sat for us for a month when we've been traveling. So, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're models who will come and uh, pick up my kids and take them out to dinner. Really? How many, yeah. how, how many kids do you have? I have three kids, uh, an 18 year old, a 14, a 15 year old now and an 11 year old. Um, and, uh, uh, the 15 year old really doesn't talk to much of anyone except for his friends from school. But the other two have become very friendly with some of the models. Oh, okay. That's good. That's good. Good. It's, it's not, you mean you're such a young guy that has a large family You have three children. Beautiful wife, a nice home in Michigan. Man, photography is a good life, good life, right? Oh, yeah. So how, tell us, how did you get into photography? Well, so I started doing photography. I'm not such a young guy. Uh, when I was about 15 years old. Okay. Um, so almost 40 years ago. Wow. Um, and uh, I, I worked with film then. I had a dark room at home uh, that I, I converted one of the rooms in our house to a dark room. I took classes at the local community college to learn what I was doing and very much enjoyed it. So now you said dark room. Now what's a, what's a dark room? We don't have dark rooms today, do we? No, oh, no. Uh, well, there, there are some purists out there who shoot on film. Um, uh, but by and large, you know, everything is digital now. But in the old days, uh, when I started, you know, you shot with film and a camera and you took that film into a dark room, took it out and developed the film and made prints. Uh, and a lot of what I had to learn in order to produce photographs at that point was chemistry. What do you mean? Could you explain that to me? So you would, if you wanted to change the exposure, you didn't do it on a computer. It would predated Photoshop or anything like it. You would use a different set of chemicals uh, or you would do chemicals and uh, you know, for different amount of time, you would expose the film to a chemical for longer or shorter period of time uh, or at a different temperature. And so you had to learn a bit of chemistry in order to get the results that you wanted. Wow, it sounds very scientific. It was, it was very scientific. There was a creative side to it, but um, it was scientific. And I, I spent a lot of my uh, life very interested in science, so it, it fit in well. So what, what other aspects of science uh, interest you? 
So uh, I went to school at uh, Cornell uh, as an undergraduate and majored in biology. Um, and so I was very interested in genetics, uh, especially molecular genetics. Um, and uh, when I went to uh, when I went to graduate school at the University of Michigan, I actually uh, continued taking some biology courses at the graduate level, um, just to sort of round out my education. Wow, man, that's, that's heavy stuff, man. Biology. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a very interesting field. Um, I think it's going to be even more interesting over the next ten or fifteen years because there have been some tremendous advances lately. So, how do you? Is there a connection? What connection is there between photography and these advances in, in biology? None. None that none that I know of. Okay. Uh, but it's. Uh, you know, I think that uh, art is often about having a diverse set of interests so that you can be creative. Um, creativity, a lot of creativity is, is just having seen things and, and mixing ideas um, and coming at things with a different perspective. Right. That's why I asked the question, because I would think having been so, you know, in a more by biology, you would have a different perspective than other folks who hadn't. Yeah, I, I, I probably should. Um, I've done very little in the way of sort of technical photography. Um, you know, there are people who do great things with, you know, microscopy or macro photography of living organisms. Uh, wildlife photography and you know occasionally because I, I, I shoot all the time if I if I can't shoot um, what I'm looking to shoot I'll shoot something else so you know in San Diego didn't really have the equipment or the space to shoot the kind of art that I usually shoot so I put something on the internet saying, hey, I want to shoot. If there are models around, I'll shoot you model portfolio shots. And I wow. shot model portfolio shots. So what, what is, what is your, your, your basic format? What, what's your basic love of photography? What, what's your style? So I am always looking to do variations on light on the human form. I think that the human form is just absolutely beautiful. And I think that really creatively lighting that form is a way to bring out that beauty and make you look at it differently. Right. And one of my goals is to do that without necessarily having the photograph end up being erotic. Uh, oh, okay. So what, no, what do you mean? So that you could say there's three different areas. There's, there's the pornographic, the erotic, and there's what you do. Oh yeah, I there. You know, occasionally I will do something that maybe borders on erotic, but it's the exception rather than the rule. Um, most of the things that I shoot, of the vast, vast majority of the things that I shoot, even the things that I shoot nude, the vast majority of them are family friendly. Nobody would look at it and have a problem with. So here's a, here's a sidebar question. Why did you go to Cornell University? Uh, <laughs> I ended up at Cornell University in part because they had a great ornithology program. And at the time I was very interested in ornithology. What is, um, what is I'm sorry, what is ornithology? Study of birds. Oh, okay. Do you do bird calls? I, I do not do bird calls. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> and if I did, I probably wouldn't admit it during the interview. <laughs> uh, and in part, it was just a, a fluke of, um, I happened to have a friend who was going there for a college visit and looking for people to go with him. And I went and I really loved the campus and the people and the program. And so I sort of, during the campus visit, fell in love with the place and decided that was the place for me. 
And so, what did you live in? Did you live in New York State, or where did you where did you come from? Oh yeah, uh, Cornell's upstate New York, Ithaca. And there's uh, actually a fine art storm, uh, Risley Residential College, um, that is just at the beginning, uh, just over the bridge from the main campus. Um, and you have to submit a portfolio uh, and uh, uh, an application. And at the time, I was, uh, I was very eager to get in there. Um, so I did the application and sent a portfolio of my photography and got in and lived there for uh, the three years that I was there. Oh, we with, it's a three-year program? So, no, it's a four-year program, but I did it a little quick. Oh, you, oh okay. So you, you got mad skills, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, I don't know if they're mad skills, but um, but you know, I just took a few extra credits here and a few extra credits there, and I was done. All right, and and yeah, and, and how did your parents feel about that? Um, you know, I've never asked them, but I assume as a parent paying for college now that they weren't heartbroken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. I guess I can, I can uh, go talk to my dad now and tell him if he wants to send me back for another year. Yeah, I'm right. To go. Yeah, right, right, right. So, so, so you have come from a large family? You have brothers and sisters? I, I have one brother. He lives in San Francisco. He's a librarian. Okay, all right. And, and you both of you guys, you live, you're from New York State, right? No, no. I, I was born and raised in Michigan. Oh, but you went to Cornell. I went, I went to college out of state. Oh, I see. Um, and I lived in New York City um, uh, for um, three years. Um, uh, so, and I've lived on Long Island out in uh, Port Jefferson. Okay. Uh, for a couple of years doing research in, uh, as a, just as a lab tech in molecular cardiology. Okay. So, so let me get this straight. So you went to Cornell, you got your degree in biology. Yes. But on the side you were doing photography. I probably stopped doing photography right around the end of Cornell. Um, and did a couple years in molecular cardiology, went back and got an MBA from the University of Michigan. Uh -huh. um, and then I um, got into the software business. Oh. And was in the software business for almost two decades. So what did you make, widgets or, or bidgets? Uh, what we made was two things, uh, vertical market applications for niche industries. Okay. Um, and large data-driven websites. Well, large, large is a relative term. Uh, something that would be on the order of 10 or 20,000 pages. Wow. Okay. That's, that's large to me. Well, it's large. It's large to me too. It's not large to a Google or a Facebook. No, 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 it's, that's minuscule. <laughs> right, so, so, so it's all a matter of perspective. That's right, it's all relative, it's all relative Einstein. Yes. So, so David, how did you get back into the, into the camera, to, into the photography? So about three years ago, I was wandering through the Smithsonian Art Museum and looking at the art and saying to myself, man, I need to do something creative again. Uh, I really, I really crave that sort of creating something that's new and different and interesting and beautiful. Um, and I'm looking at contemporary art in the Smithsonian and saying, man, I, I need to do more than just look at this. I, I need to make some. Right. And so I, I made myself a list of pros and cons of various ways to go about that. Um, and I was sitting at a, I think it was a Thanksgiving dinner 
uh, with my dad and telling him this. And he said, well, what are the things on the list? And I told him and he said, what are the pros and cons? And I said, well, I'll go get you the list and you can look. And he looked at photography and he says, for photography, the only con you have on here is that it's expensive. Right. Um, I said, yeah. And he said, well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll give you one of my old cameras and a tripod and some light stands and some flashes. And uh, you can start with that because he's also um, an award-winning photographer. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. how, how, how modest we are. It runs in the family. <laughs> <laughs> he inherited it from me. Oh, oh I see. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Uh, aren't, aren't you modest? <laughs> <laughs> I've also got, you know, for a while there, my youngest son was very much into uh, photography. Uh, it only lasted about a year and he's sort of grown out of it for now. But he used to come with me to shoots and he would oh, shoot yeah? models. Yeah. Um, nice. I, I wish he'd do some more of that, but... Um, he will. He just give, give, him, give him space. Give him space. Yeah, he, he's pretty good. He, he knows Photoshop and Lightroom, and he knows the basics of, you know, exposure, and, and he's, he's a talented guy, and he has a good eye. So now, you mentioned two words that I'm not familiar with. I know you have Photoshop and you have Lightroom, it is? Yes, they're what? both Adobe products. Well, what's, what, what's the difference between the two of them? So Lightroom has a couple of differences. One is that it has the ability to sort and organize and categorize photographs. Oh, I see. So that, so that you can have a database. You know, I have tens of thousands of photographs. And even with uh, a good database of what's what, it's sometimes hard to find something. So how, do you, how does that Lightroom help you? So Lightroom, you can organize things uh, by date. You can organize things into folders and subfolders. You can, or, you can then search by location. You can search by the okay. person that's in it. You can label things with different colors um, and then you have the ability to, to search in various ways and you can you can create collections so I have you know a collection of backgrounds and a collection of textures and a collection wow. of skies and you know so so then I can search through the collection of skies and say okay show me all the skies that have sunsets oh man that's that's beautiful stuff so now, yeah. after your dad gave you his uh, old stuff, uh, what was your next step? What did you do then? Uh, my next step was, um, was to learn studio lighting, oh, okay. um, which I had done some of, but it was 30 years out of date. Um, and, then, and to learn Photoshop and Lightroom which, you know, allowed me to do digital manipulation the way I used to be able to manipulate things in dark room. Exactly, right. Um, you know, in the dark room, you wanted to uh, take a, a dark area and, and make it white. You know, I remember painting on with this rubbery paint on onto negatives. Um, you know, can't do that anymore. No. <laughs> So that's true, right? So, so you know, you had to learn a whole new set of tools. All right. So you, you're in, you're left the dark room, went to Photoshop, you get a digital camera. So now these digital cameras are, are they as good as the old school stuff? In some ways, I think they're better. Um, there are things that I can do with the digital camera that that I couldn't do with. Uh, film. I can do, I do a lot of stuff with very low light. Um, it would have been very, very difficult to do some of that with, uh, with film if it was possible at all. I mean, I have, I have shots of models that are literally lit with three candles. Um, wow. I, I couldn't do that uh, on film and get the same quality results. 
So anyone listening who wants to use your services, they know that just about everything is possible due to technology and your skill. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I'd be more modest than that. Um, but yeah, I can certainly do a, a lot of things that uh, I couldn't have done without the technology. And I can do a lot of things that I think, quite frankly, amaze me at times. Well, that's, that's good to hear. So now you've been, you, how long have you been doing this? Like, you know, is your passion? You, actually, your dad gave you a set. It took you three days or three years or whatever. So I've been doing this about three years since I, since I restarted. Um, and uh, in those three years, I've, I've really come uh, a long way. I mean, stuff that I thought was really great even a year ago, I look at now and I say, man, I could do that better. Um, Wait, okay. Like, you have any, well, let's, let's look at some of the work and see what we're talking about here. Is that okay with you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we have this, this, this piece here. It's one of your favorite pieces, I understand, right? Yes, and that's something where I tried to do that on film 30 years ago, 35 years ago. Okay. And I couldn't do that on film, even though I tried. Um, but um, I... When I was uh, starting out uh, doing digital photography, I said, I'm going to try that again. I had a model come in and uh, uh, we, tried, we tried this with um, light painting. This is all done with light. There's, there's no actual uh, paint in this. Okay, could, photograph. okay. explain it. This is a, a, a study in light, right? How you use the light to create this effect, is that right? So exactly, so the, the model is, is sitting uh, in front of black velvet, okay. uh, which is pretty good at absorbing stray light. Um, and all the color is just colored light reflected off of her skin. So you had the light, you, you, you positioned the different colored lamps so, into her skin. It's a long exposure, so I'm I'm standing there and shining the light on her and moving it. Oh, so I'm okay. drawing with the light. I'm painting with the light. Oh, okay. And uh, then you know that allows her when I'm not shining a light on an arm to move an arm up um, to a different position. So you start oh, with hands in one position, and you can you can then move the arms to the next position and then move them to the next position and uh, create a, a, an effect where you have multiple, it looks like multiple arms, it's just the same arm at different times. And how did you come across this, this process? Uh, made it up. Well, come on, how did you do yeah. that? So yeah. there, there, are, there are lots of people who do light painting Yes. Um, I have not seen anyone doing it quite the way I do it with light reflected off the skin. I, there may be someone out there who does that, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen it. So, in other words, this is this is a pine, you pioneered this technique. As far as I know, yeah. So, what do you what do you call it? The, the David or what? <laughs> I just call it light painting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's cool, man. And, and uh, what's the name of this piece again? So this is Kuan Yin. Uh, the Bodhisattva Kuan Yin is, from, uh, is the goddess of mercy and healing. Oh, okay. Um, and I, I have tried doing this with um, UV reactive paint but haven't gotten uh, a result that I like as nicely as this. I see. Well, this is, this is a very nice, nice result. And then, the, the name again is what? Kuan Yin? Kuan Yin. All right. And it means what again? It's the uh, goddess of healing and mercy. And why is this, you know, why were you attracted to this? So when I was in high school, when I first tried it, I was very interested in Eastern religions, Buddhism, Taoism. Um, I thought that 
a lot of the art that was associated with Buddhism was particularly beautiful. Um, and so, you know, it's just been in my head ever since then. And, uh, you know, so, so, I, so you're, I, wanted you're, to, I wanted to make my own version. So you're like, you're one of those, oh, no, you're wrong, gang, you don't know, you're wrong, gang, you don't know, you're wrong, you go. Never done that, <laughs> but, uh, you and you, you and Tina Turner, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like Tina Turner. I like Motown, but I had no idea she meditated. Yeah, yeah. That's. I think she after she left uh, the Big Ike, she got into that heavily. Oh, didn't know. Yeah, she's she's she does she has some tapes out. They're they're nice. They're nice. Let's move on to another one of the the Davids. All right. So this is um, a uh, model that uh, I shot at a group shoot. Um, and I did the profile um, in order to do a, a composite of a profile and a straight on face, which is something that's been done many times. Um, and it's sort of an optical illusion. If you look at it one way, it looks like you're looking at the model and profile and you look at it another way, it looks like you're looking at straight on at half a face. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a nice trick, but um, not tremendously creative. And then a few weeks ago, I was going through old photos looking for things to edit and I came across the profile and I said, I can do something nice with that. Um, and I took a uh, picture of a tree that's just right outside our front door um, and uh, took it at three different exposures and overlaid them using uh, high dynamic range software that let me bring out that color and then took that whole thing and overlaid it on her profile. And it really is a, a piece that I. I, I very much like the results. It, it just, it looks beautiful. It's soul American, Jack, it's soul American. That's a good piece. Looks like Mother Earth, you know, like, you know, I, I like what you did. That's, that's, that's saying something, I like that. Well, thank you. That's cool, man. What's the name of this piece? So I call this Katie, which is the name of the model. Oh, okay, Katie. Yes, yeah, this, this is all right. Where do, you, where do you find your models? So most of the models I find on Facebook groups. Um, being in mid-Michigan, uh, a lot of the people who model know each other. Um, mm -hmm. And I, you know, I will get models who have shot with me who will refer other models. Sometimes I'll get referrals from makeup artists. Um, I shoot stuff that's a bit different from most of the other photographers around here. Um, and for some models, that's a plus, And for some models, that's, that's well, how, how, how is your style different? What do, what do you mean by that? Well, so, I mean, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the photographers locally will do a lot of fashion, glamor, boudoir, um, and I, I try very hard to stick to more artistic things. I'll trade and I will do fashion or glamour shots um, for a portfolio in exchange for, you know, some time spent doing modeling on some more artistic things. Okay. But, um, you know, really, I, I am much more interested in shooting art than I am in shooting some of these other styles and how long with how long did your model sit for this particular one so this particular one it was at a group shoot and so you rotated you know uh to, to a different model if you're a photographer or to mm. different photographer if you're a model basically every 30 minutes okay so um she was with me for about 30 minutes so can you can you explain your 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 compositional process, how do you set things up? What do you look for? How do you go? So 
I mean, it depends uh, in part on the model and what we're doing, but um, generally I shoot in studio. I shoot against a plain white or plain black backdrop. Um, and then if I'm going to uh, put them into another scene, that scene is generally shot separately. Um, usually uh, not at the same time. Um, sometimes, you know, I'll shoot things uh, days apart, but oftentimes I will shoot something and uh, look for six or eight months for the right background to put that in. So I've got a dress that I drew on using rose petals on a model, and it took me six months until I was uh, in China until I found the scene to put her in. Wow. Um, yeah, and actually one of the, one of the pieces we're gonna look at today I shot the model in studio and um, maybe five months later, I was in Barcelona and I shot the background. All right, stop, 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 stop. I was in China, I was in Barcelona, I was in Mars. How do you get to all these places, man? You shooting people up all the time or what? <laughs> <laughs> well, they all get shot in Okemos, Michigan. <laughs> I, don't, I don't take them with me. Um, <laughs> Uh, Barcelona was, was uh, a trip with my wife for a conference. Um, uh, China was a trip um, because my youngest son is learning Chinese. Ah, ni hao ma. Exactly. Uh, I'm not learning Chinese though, so I don't know what that means. How are you? It means how you doing, Jack? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, we insist that each one of our children learn a language. And so our oldest uh, learned Japanese, uh, our middle son learned Greek, um, and our youngest son is learning Chinese. You know what? It's, it's, bar nothing else, David, that's good stuff. I mean, I'm so happy to hear that. Believe me, that's great. Yeah, and we, we last summer, we went to China. Uh, the whole family was there for a month, and then we left our youngest son with friends there for another month, uh, hoping that two months in China would push him over that edge to fluency. Oh, okay. That's a lot of hoping. Yeah, it is. Uh, with, our, with our oldest, who uh, learned Japanese, we sent him for two months to Japan when he was 15, and that really did push him to fluency. Oh, really? Okay. Marvelous. And is he using that now in the business context, a social context? Um, he's using that now in the context of college to uh, take Japanese and have a, a very easy course. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> he's, he's taking, they told him he had to take a language course. Right. And he's like, I already speak Japanese. And they said, then take one of our advanced Japanese courses. So Good. Good. He's taking it and acing it. Oh, great. I'm glad to hear that. It's, it's, a, it's good investment, right? Um, you know, it's like uh, anything else you do for your kids. It's good for brain development, whether they use it or not. I mean, I have a kid who plays soccer, but I don't expect him to be a soccer star. I have a kid who plays piano, but I don't expect that he's going to be playing Carnegie Hall but it's good for them to develop skills and to learn things and to master things and to exercise their brain. Yeah, um, yeah. That, so, that, you know, if he never uses it, that's okay. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. That's, that's what I like to hear. That's good stuff, man. So let's move on to another one of your, one of the David pieces here. What we got? All right. Okay, we gotta go over here. Oops. Can we do that now? Here we go. Let me just make it go up. All right, here's, here's a piece. I, this is a bubble piece, I guess. Yes, so, so this actually is um, a piece. That, this is one of the ones I was talking about. This, uh, the model was shot in studio in Alchemist. Yes. Um, she was painted by a good friend of mine, Dana Dietrich. Um, and... Um, and uh, shot in studio in Alchemist. And it was really pretty 
plain piece. We just posed her so that you could see the the beautiful art that was all over her body, but okay. against a white background, it was, uh, you know, not something that was tremendously interesting. And then five months later, I was in Barcelona in a park and there was someone blowing bubbles. And I said, you know, I could put her in one of those bubbles. So I photographed bubbles um, and put her inside one in Photoshop. Was that, was that the park by Las Ramblas in Barcelona? That is the Park Güell, um, which is sort of, uh, I think it's north of town. If I oh, it is. Know. Okay. I haven't been there in a long time, but I know that bubbles are a big thing in Barcelona. Uh, it, it was really nice to see, and I mean, it was an inspiring place. Uh, the, the, the art is just all around you in Barcelona. How is, how is the Picasso Museum there? Did not go to the Picasso Museum. Oh, wow. David, you missed out, man. Beautiful. Anyway, get, getting back to that, I mean, getting back to your David Picasso, uh, tell us more about this. How did, how did the, the imagery of the trees and stuff like that, how did they come out? So, you know, it was, it was a question of taking, taking the picture that I had of the model and finding the right background, the right place to put her. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's sometimes very difficult to find someplace where she fits and where the composition looks interesting. Let's, okay, let's talk about that. Could, could you give us an idea how you composed this piece and why you did what you did? You well, have, so... You have a dominant vertical with the tree. You have her coming out of Baroque. Um, is that intentional? Is this happening organically? How do you plan it out? So she's, she's obviously rotated around to be at that angle. Um, in part, that's to make it look natural with the light coming in. You'll see the light is coming in from the, the side and hitting the side of the tree, and it's hitting the same side of the model because we've lit the model from above and to the left. Right. And so what, what you want to do is you want to make it look like she's actually really part of the scene. So the light, the light is coming from this direction here, right? Right, exactly. And you can see it on her hip and you can see it on the side of the tree. Right. Um, and there's some, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And there's some, uh, there's some shading going on where I take in colors from the purple and the green on the bubble and yes. very subtly put them on her body so that it looks oh, like- Oh, I see that. How, how did you do that? That's all done in Photoshop. Okay, so you, you, you Photoshop this part in here. So Photoshop, that, and if you look at her elbow, right where it hits the bubble, yes. you'll see there's purple that's going in uh, to her yeah. elbow. That, yeah. that comes right from the bubble. You, you, you sample the colors from the bubble and you okay. send it into the model to make it look like she's not just pasted on top of the bubble. Right, right, you give it that realistic feeling. Exactly. All right. So, so now, I mean, I'm trying to get into the mind of the master here. Okay. So I, I, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do a, something that evokes a feeling. What and feeling is that? What, what? For this, I, I'm, I'm trying to evoke a, a feeling of wonder and whimsy and an appreciation of beauty and you have the beauty of the model, you have the beauty of the paint on the model and you have a beauty of, of the bubble and, and, and the uh, trees and the sky behind it. There's, you know, you've got a, a natural looking model with natural looking designs on her, botanical looking designs. Uh, and you've got, the the beauty of the nature that she's in and so it all melds together thematically and 
and in terms of looking as if it's one one piece that it was photographed at one time. Well, you know, some things just came up in my mind. Actually, two questions. One is, it seems like your themes, the, the two big themes we've seen so far, they're like nature themes. How does nature impact you in, in, in your work? So, I mean, nature is something that's, that's important and it's, it's another source of beauty. Um, and so, you know, I'm always looking for natural things that, that are inspired by nature. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I mentioned before, and I wish I'd included this piece, but, you know, there's a piece where I drew a dress on a model using rose petals. Um, and then I put her in a setting where there's, where there's rose petals on the ground and rose petals on the bushes behind her. And it, it really is, you know, the idea of a model in nature is something that appears through a lot of my work. Um, All right. Now, another question is, so far I've only seen female models. Do you do male models as well? Um, absolutely. Uh, the last model I shot, the one I shot most recently in San Francisco was a male model. His name was Lorenzo. Uh -huh. um, one Lo Blanco on Instagram. Um, if you want to uh, look what's, him what's up. That, what's that again now? Juan Blanco? He's one L-O-B-L-A-N-C-O -O on okay. Instagram. All right. Um, this model, I should have said, you can find as Sasha Page Two on Facebook. And the previous model uh, is Katie O'Rear um, model on Facebook. Um, and uh, um, so, yeah, I, I do. I would say that um, in mid-Michigan for every, one male model that I that I get inquiring about working with me, I have thirty to forty female models inquiring. Wow! Um, when I um, when I looked for people in San Diego, the um, the ratio was pretty darn close to one to one. Really? Uh, yeah. Wow. And, I'm actually going to uh, Miami next week or next month um, and looking for models there. And so far, uh, it looks like in Miami, it's pretty even in terms of male and female models wanting to work with me. So what's, what's happening in Michigan? It, I don't know why, it, why that's true in Michigan. I had assumed that that was true all over. Um, hmm. But, um, but it, it looks like San Diego and Miami are significantly different. But yeah, no, I would love to work with more male models. I do work with male models. Um, and uh, probably for an individual model, I work with the males more often than I work with the females because, you know, I can't, I can't get as many male models. So I'll, I'll ask them to come for more shoots. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. Um, but there's just so many more female models in Michigan that uh, I end up working with females a lot more. Well, I guess, you know, one man's shortcomings, another man's pleasure. You know I mean? You got so many female models there. Poor boy, it, poor boy. It's, it's nice to work with female models, but um, I, would, I would love to work with uh, male models as well. And I, you know, I've done some couple shoots. Uh, oh, okay. That's interesting. Right. Either a real or a pretend couple. And that has a lot of possibilities too. Um, what do you mean by that? Give us an idea. So, so um, one of my favorite shots is of my wife in a pose where she's forming the shape of a heart. Um, and one of the things oh that, yes i know that i i saw that one yes i know that. okay so one of the things that i've always wanted to do is that same shot um lit like the Kuan yin photo um but with a male being one half of the heart and a female being the other half of the heart. okay 
I have not yet found uh, a male that can uh, hold that pose. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, I'm, I, I've, I've had uh, probably four or five male models try it, but I, I have yet to find a male model who can actually do it. Okay, so David, give out the call. Shout it out, man. Come on. Uh, all right. Male models, <laughs> come, come shoot with me. <laughs> Especially one who can do a back bend. <laughs> well, you know, maybe you should go to the yoga, yoga places. I have, um, I have tried asking a yoga instructor if she would uh, ask uh, for models for me, but um, have not gotten the a uh, positive response from any of her male students. So. Okay, so so next, go go to the kung fu guys. Um, Jackie Chan style, Jackie Chan style, you know. That's that's an interesting idea. I don't know that they have that kind of flexibility. I think the next the next place to look would actually be dancers. Yeah, um, right, right. And I have. Um, I have some female models who dance and I've asked them to, you know, ask around for a male model to do that. Um, and there's some, you know, there's some things that I would like to do with couples that would um, not necessarily require that kind of flexibility. So I would like to do a, a series of um, a couple where one is a painter and the other is being painted. And um. we would we would literally body paint the one being painted and in Photoshop put her onto the canvas so that she was being, being painted in, in a way that, that uh, really looked interesting. And then also using Photoshop, we'd have her step out of the canvas um, and take a picture of the body painting, <laughs> stepping out of the canvas and then have a, a photo of the two of them together once she's out of the canvas. Um, it's, it's, it's a really great story that I could tell. Yeah. So like, like let's, 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 I want to come back and talk to you about that story because it sounds exciting. You, you can do whatever you want in your world. This is David's world you can do a lot of things that are very surreal. Yeah. And yes, that's true. I, I have, I have uh, really liked a lot of surreal artists. Let's go on to another, another image. Okay. All right. Here's one. So this is Katie again. Um, the same model that I had uh, the tree and actually she came in um, last week on Tuesday and we shot for about an hour and a half, mostly for me to um, try out some new uh, equipment that I had. And I told her I wanted to put her in a bubble. Um, and she'd seen the, the previous uh, bubble one. And I said, no, no, I want to put you in a bubble a little differently. I just want, you know, your head and we're going to do a headshot and we're going to wrap the bubble around your head and i don't know if i was explaining it well enough but she she said okay and so we took i don't know a half a dozen shots of her face um lit like this i you know i i i knew what i wanted um i knew the angle i knew the lighting and then when i was in san diego i took a, another bubble picture um uh, just against the blue sky, and I put the two together in uh, Photoshop. So I, I shot the bubble on Thursday, and by Friday I had the piece. Wow! So now, what what angle did you shoot this on? Did you give us an insight into that process. So the light, uh, the primary light, um, is up and to the right of her face. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have a secondary light that's uh, probably even in height with her face and off to the left. So we have uh, one, one source of light coming in this way, right? No, it's coming in from the top. Oh, okay. So it's, uh -huh. it's coming in from the top right. It's coming in from the top right. Yeah, yeah like that, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then the other source of light is coming in from the left hand side, just even with her. 
or like or like coming up this way so it's not coming up it's just it's it's flat oh it's just radiating right yeah like that okay all right now that's interesting because you have you have two sources of light is, is that particular something that photographers use you use oh so i mean photographers will use anything usually in studio from one to four light sources um it's pretty common to have a main light uh up and to one side and then a fill light um from the other side and then uh couple of lights on the background or a couple of lights on the hair. Um, you can also do, you know, lighting from behind for silhouettes. Uh, lighting from the side will often give you what they call rim lighting and that can really, for a male model, can enhance the look of muscles. Um, you can get outlines that way. Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> uh, there, I actually, I actually have um, done some little classes in studio lighting. Um, okay, so like, tell me about that. Where do I sign up? Uh, Facebook, what is it? Come on out to Okemos, Michigan, and okay. uh, we will put you in the studio and, uh, and get a model and we'll, we'll play with lights for a few hours and you'll, the principles are easy. It's mastering them that takes a long time. Right. It's, it's like a combination, depending on the situations. That that that's the difference. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's 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 all sorts of different effects you can have based on the distance of the light, mm. how the light is modified. So there's modifiers um, that can soften the light. Um, sort of like clouds give you softer shadows. Um, you can put modifiers on the front of lights to give you sort of softer, more diffuse light. Um, you know, there's- How do you, how do you know when, when, it's, when it's ready, the, the lighting is correct? Usually for much of what I'm doing, I know in my head what I want. Um, and, it, then it's just a question of, of getting it there. Um, so the Kuan Yin, I knew exactly what I wanted in my head. Um, uh, but I... That's right, go ahead, go ahead. Go. Hey, can I call you back? Hello? Hello. Sorry about that. That's all right. We need we need a station break anyway. All right. All right. Where were we? Well, we you're talking about the light oh, inside your yeah. head. So so do I know? Right? Yeah. So for the Kuan Yin. Um, the first time I shot that Kuan Yin with that model, I had too much light leaking in around the windows. <clears throat> so anyway, while David's away, I'm just taking a time out to let you know that this segment is brought to you by the Academy of Composition. I'm saying that because if you're an artist and you want to get your skills up, your composition skills, go to core80.com. Go there and talk to Don Victor. Don Victor is the head guy. He's the guy to set you straight. If you want to save time, go there. All right? It's corey.com and David's back and everything is good. Go ahead, David, continue. All right. So Kwan Yin, I I I shot the first time I shot it with that model, uh, there's too much light leaking in around the windows. Um, I generally, you know, black out a studio completely for light painting. Okay. And at that point, there was too much light. So I decided to compensate by making the light that I was shining on the model brighter, um, which didn't quite work because I had too much light leaking off onto the backdrop. Um, the backdrop is black velvet, which doesn't reflect a lot, but it reflected enough that uh, 
that reflected enough that, that there was, it was problematic. And I showed the end result to the model and she said, that's great. And I said, no, it's not. <laughs> not what I had in mind. So she came back very nicely came back and we spent another just a really quick shoot 20 25 minutes uh and shot that new kuan yin and when i showed it to her she said okay now i understand why you didn't like the first one right, uh, right. so i have in my mind what i'm looking for and uh you know i can generally tell if if it's going to work or not and oftentimes if i try and say something's close enough when I get the end result, it's not. So do you, do you sketch these things out? Do you have like, I guess, temperature maps or energy maps of some type? No, it's all in my head. Okay. That's, that's, why, you, that's why you have light box. It's, it's, it's important to understand what you're trying to get and then to understand the principles the the physics of the light so that you can mm. actually get there okay all right so now you say you have some new equipment what's this new equipment you have so um right now um we uh the, there's a photographer that i share a studio with and we've gone from uh analog strobes to digital um which give me a bit more precise control over the light. Um, so, so I can, I can modify the light more easily. I'm learning to use that. Um, How's that working out for you? Uh, that is working really well. I also have, uh, I got as a birthday present from my wife, a set of light painting brushes um, from a place called light paint, lightpaintingbrushes.com um which are fantastic um what's a light paint, what, what is that what's a light painting brush so um you know they uh it's essentially a flashlight and an attachment and then the uh attachment uh has things you can plug into it, which are made of colored plastics or acrylics um, that you can shine light through in order to uh, paint with light, which is what I do in a lot of my compositions is I'm, I'm painting not with paint, but with light. Um, and there's, there's some that are fiber optic, there's some that have very small holes and the rest of it's black so that you get a, a, a small pinpoint kind of light. There's okay. some that have, you know, big long uh, sticks of plastic so you can have, you know, a four foot long piece of blue light that you can then wave around and use oh, as a brush. Well, that sounds very technical, but let me ask you this, David. Can you share with us your typical day? What time you get up, do you do push ups, sit ups? You go to the studio, you do your art, come back, take care of the kids. What, what, what's your day like? So I will generally, um, I will generally uh, go to the gym every day. I probably in a typical week will only shoot once or twice. Um, I spend a lot of time doing editing. Um, uh, a single image can take, 20 hours to edit if it's a if it's a complicated edit right. and in a um, single photo shoot i can get hundreds of images even if i only edit a small percentage of them it's a lot more time editing than there is actually shooting okay so so the art is in the editing uh a lot of the art is in the editing like not 80 20 almost nothing comes straight out of the camera right is it 80 20 60 40 uh i would say that it's closer to uh 95 5. whoa man really yeah the the shooting is the shooting is easy compared to the editing okay now that's i did i never thought about that but that, that's a good point all right now oh here's my question i have for you as as a uh 
photographer, as an artist photographer, what what do you what's your major challenge? The thing that you that really you know rubs you the wrong way? Says I don't I don't want to go in there to do that. What's what is that? What is that? Thing? Oh, undoubtedly, it's getting reliable models. Get out of here, really? Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, getting reliable models is is very difficult. Um, Why is that? What do you mean? What happens? So. Uh, you know, often I'm doing this on trade. I'll shoot portfolio shots in exchange for time spent uh, doing Modeling. doing artistic shoots. Um, and, you know, I have some models who are very reliable, um, but, you know, they tend to be, especially in Michigan, where you can't make uh, a real living as a full-time model, they tend to be doing other things. They're college students. They have lives. They, you know, so things come up. They get in the way. The model gets sick. The model has finals. The model has some conflict. So there's a lot of scheduling and rescheduling and cancellation. Um, you know, sometimes the models uh, just don't show up. Uh, oh, man. Time. Shoot and you don't have a model. That's that's heartbreaking. It, it is. I take it very personally, even yes. though I know I shouldn't. Um, oh, I mean, you know. And it, uh, you know, it, it, it's very, it's it's very, it, it is undoubtedly the single biggest aggravation. Mm. Um, you know, and I, I'll have models who, you know, I've worked with multiple times and, you know, schedule a shoot with and we end up you know rescheduling three or four times before we end up oh wow man yeah it's it's it you know and i i i try and always uh always uh be understanding and kind about things um because you know i understand that it's not the center of their life um but yeah, that's undoubtedly the. Part right. of the you know, that's that's part of business because your 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 employees are your biggest thing, you know, and so as you know that from being in business. But the thing I'm asking you is like, um, you have a show coming up, right? Have I have a show right now at um, Wheaton's Framing and Art Gallery in Mason, Michigan. Um, I've got another one uh, coming up in April at Keys to Creativity in the Lansing Mall. And so let's let's try to get over to to see this other piece here. Okay. It's here someplace. Well, before we do that, let's look at this one here. Here's another one of your works, one of your, uh, I guess, artistic photos, as you call them. Yes. Oh, you know, before we do this, here's what I wanted to really know. How is you, what is your, um, your market? I mean, who, what, how would you define your, your target market here, the people who buy your work? So I am looking for people who really enjoy having something different um, that they can hang on their walls. Um, I'm trying to do something that's creative and you know i just i want it to be appreciated um i have i have found that um you know people are a lot of people really like to see the the range of things i can produce um and they really it's something that they enjoy looking at it's beautiful okay. um so I've also recently started to offer, you know, if there's someone who wants a, a piece, but instead of having a piece with a model, they want a piece with themselves in it, I'm, I'm gonna offer that as a service. We'll, we'll plan and execute and create a piece that has uh, a person or someone's someone's you know wife or whatever in the piece as opposed to just buying a piece off the wall oh okay and what what do you call that type of art <laughs> what do i i i like to use the phrase put yourself in the picture okay so that so guys out there you can now put yourself in the picture they, that's absolutely right get, get, you know how you have the selfie right <laughs> <laughs> well 
You know, I, I have at times had uh, a friend send me a picture and they want it photoshopped in a certain way and uh, I'll do that for them. All right, so let's, what's, what's this piece? What's the name of so this? This piece is actually very conventionally lit. Um, it, was, it was originally taken and meant to be a, a black and white. Um, and I just, I really wanted to see what I could do to give it some color inside of Photoshop. So this is all, this is all the light in here is done with Photoshop. It's a, it's a very conventionally lit piece that's then colored in Photoshop. And what's the story you're trying to convey here? So this one, I really just wanted to show the beauty of her body. Um, and so I was looking for an interesting pose, an interesting position um, that would just emphasize her shape. And um, this one actually, shortly after we took it, um, the model, uh, Sonia Marie on Facebook, um, had a friend who was interested in putting it on an album cover. And oh. so uh, the, it, it, it is a good piece for something like that uh, because it's, it's got that square aspect ratio and it's got a nice, clearly defined set of colors. And a yeah, I can see that. that. That would go nicely on an album cover. And it speaks to that type of audience that, you know, gets off on that. Very nice. Makes sense. All right, let's move on to your, I think we have one last one to go. And that's your, your, oh, here's your. So this is when I was hanging the show in Mason. Um, and there are, I think, 29 pieces. So I was just starting to hang the show there. Um, and... Oh, there's the heart. Oh, you just, you just, uh, down on the floor, there's the heart. With oh, the yes, wife. here it is right here, yes. There's That's my wife um, as the model. Yes. Um, no, so, I was going to say, that, that you should do a Valentine's series on that. It, it, would, it would make a nice Valentine's series. Yeah, right. You should, you know, get that out there, man. Valentine's Day is a couple months away, but the proper planning, you hate it. This is the, this is the Kuan Yin. No, so that one's actually uh, the goddess Shiva, but it's the same technique. Um, you can't really see the background on that, but the, the background on that is done with a sheet of aluminum foil and then an oil-based gold paint over it and then a water-based silver paint over that. So it has a really interesting texture. You can imagine. In, yeah. this, in this picture, you can't really see it. but No. To, what about this piece? Is that the same technique that you used over here for this piece? Absolutely. Same technique. It's, um, it's actually one photo that's duplicated five times and the color is changed in Photoshop. Oh. But, but the one photo is, is light painted and then, you know, it's rotated around um, so, so that we, we produce that star pattern with the different colors. And where is this show? It's at uh, Wheaton's Framing and Art Gallery in Mason, Michigan. And you know, do you have a website, David? Uh, yeah, website is line, L-I-N-E, light, L-I-G-H-T, color, C-O-L-O-R dot com. That's where they can get you? They can get me there or facebook.com slash line light color. All right. So that's, that's David. David is a, a very interesting guy because he comes from the molecular background into the photography world. And they're both related, in my opinion. He's, he's gone from dark rooms to digital. I say from dark room to Photoshop. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. And, you know, it's just good work. I like your work, David. And I want to thank you for having, taking the time out. To be with well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Is there anything else you want to share with us before we wind it up? Uh, can't think of anything. Um, 
I, I would, you know, welcome any comments or feedback. Um, I, I would love to have people uh, follow me on Facebook um, or if anyone wants to uh, uh, contact me and get emails when I have upcoming shows, I'd be happy to put you on an email list. Um, so yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed doing the interview. I want to thank you for doing it with me. My pleasure. Uh, it was it was great. Thank you very much. And you know why we do these interviews, David? You know why? Because people buy from people they know, and they know you by the stories you tell. Right? Well, thank you very much. And that's Bill Jordan here with Candid Art Interviews. Thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, this show is brought to you by the Academy of Composition. Go there to get your compositional skills up. You can go there to corady.com. That's corady.com. Speak with Don Victor. He picks them up and puts them down like no other guy in composition. With that, you have to say, happy trails to you, and we'll see you next time.